Have you ever had one of those products that you were super excited about, so ready to post, so excited, you were like, this is the one that's gonna make me all the money on Teachers Pay Teachers. And then no one bought it. It is the most disappointing thing, especially when you poured your heart and soul into something that you know is gonna change teachers' lives and they're just not purchasing. If you've ever experienced this, or even if you haven't, but you just wanna do even better, then today we're gonna talk about how to make sure your products actually sell. So we're gonna talk about research, we're gonna talk about making your products, we're gonna talk a lot, a lot, a lot about listing, we're gonna talk about marketing, we're gonna talk about all those things. So if you're interested in that and making sure that your products sell on Teachers Pay Teachers, then let's get started. When it comes to creating your product and making sure it's gonna sell, you really need to start with some market research. That sounds fancy, but I promise it's not a big deal. <laughs> Basically what I want you to do is figure out whether or not people are gonna actually buy your product. If you've already been on Teachers Pay Teachers for, you know, more than a couple of minutes, then I want you to go through and see what of your products are selling. So I want you to see what is selling the most, what is making the most money, because those are not always the same, and also what is converting the best. Those three things are completely different and they can all be found in your product statistics. So you can see how many you've sold, how much money they have made, and also your conversion rate. Conversion rate, by the way, is how many people landed on your listing and then actually purchased it. Whatever that percentage is, is your conversion rate. So these three things are really important because they might be different. These are all gonna inform you as to what products are selling well, what is working, and what you can kind of lean into. What I like to do as a little hack is if you have the TPT app on your phone, then I want you to go to your dashboard and then, okay, click over here where it says last sale. And so up at the top is gonna to be the product that has sold the most in the last 30 days and it will go in descending order. So for me, my top selling product in the last 30 days was my What A Wonderful World Jazz Lesson, which is crazy because y'all, that thing's only been up for a couple weeks. Like I don't, it's like blown up. It's been crazy, crazy. However, underneath it is Jazz Lessons for Elementary Music. And I've sold about half as many of them, but I've made almost twice as much money just because it's a bundle and so it makes more money. So that's why it's important to look at what's selling the most and also what's making the most money. What I want you to do is once you get there, to look through the last about 10 products, and I usually just will grab a sheet of notebook paper or maybe in my planner at the beginning of the month, I'll write down the names of the top 10 products that I have sold in the last month. When you do this, you're gonna start finding a couple of similarities and that's what you want. You wanna be able to say, oh, hey, three of these that are doing really well are all in this same product line or these are all seasonal resources or hey we have all these google resources or different things like that are gonna tell you what you should do out of those 10 i like to pick about three three to five products that i'm going to create in the next month that are based off of those so for example pretty much all of my top sellers right now are digital products not all of them but most of them and a lot of them are about musicians so i know that a good idea for something to make would be a google slides resource about a musician and that's probably going to do well for me now is that going to do well for you Probably not, especially if you teach like high school math, but I teach elementary music and so for me it works really well. So that's something I can lean into. So that can be one of my three that I'm gonna do next month. I also have a lot of resources that I think people purchase for Black History Month, which is kind of funny because I didn't actually intend for them to be about Black History Month but that still kind of seems to be what happened. So I know that I can really lean into a couple of holidays or month celebrations like that. So I think like Women's Heritage Month is in March, so I might try to do like a musician who is a woman and feature her in a Google resource next month and see if that does well or not. I don't know, we shall see. As you write down your 10, you can kind of start to see those similarities in what is all selling the best. You can see, you know, what type of resource and what it's doing. I also have quite a few virtual field trips that are really high up there book based music lessons really high up there just different things like that that are all kind of in my niche but looking specifically at the things that are selling the best right now is really helpful especially as education continues to change like daily seriously i had kids in the building for the first time in a year 
this week it was super weird i was like what is happening i can see you you're in 3d like what what is this i don't know um it, it was really exciting but also really crazy now if you're like but becca i'm brand new and i don't have any data yet that's fine what i want you to do instead is if you have an idea for something you want to make i want you to type into teachers pay teachers and see if anyone has made anything similar to that what i want you to see from that is not like oh someone's already done it it's taken but what i want you to see is oh someone's done it so hypothetically somebody must be searching for it someone must be purchasing it so if you see that it doesn't mean you can't do it it just means that oh, okay someone else has made it once you do that i do want you to look at their product do not do not copy do not steal anything but see what their product is and see if maybe there's a hole you can fill so maybe they have like a really cool math activity but maybe you could make it digital or maybe you could make it for centers or maybe you could make it for a higher grade or a lower grade or you can differentiate it or stuff like that really try to see like what can i do differently than what people are already doing and that's going to help your product to stand out also if you see like oh hey there's like 50 people that have all done it this very very similar thing then maybe you do decide to pick something different I've actually done that before with music lessons I do a lot of music lessons based on songs and I have had times where I've looked them up and I've been like oh there is a ton of people who have made a music lesson based on this song so I'm not going to because I don't feel like I have anything to add or make it better so I'm gonna spend my time on things that I can make different than other people so Seeing other people's things is not a reason to not do it, but it gives you really interesting information about how you should proceed with your product. All right, number two is that you need to make it pretty. Now, I know I have some high school teachers on here that are gonna be like, we don't need cutesy things. I didn't say cutesy, I said pretty. But bear with me for a second. If you just open up a Word document and type in a few equations and hit done and hit save, then it's not really going to be something that teachers need you to do. Like, because if you could throw it together in two seconds, someone else can throw it together in two seconds and they don't need to pay you $3 for it. Instead, I want you to think about how to make things aesthetically pleasing. So you want to look for clip art for borders and fonts that are all going to work together and look nice. I get all of my clip art borders, all that kind of stuff in teachers pay teachers that I buy from there. What you want to look for is that magical word for commercial use. Do not use anything that says for personal use only. That means you cannot sell it. You're looking for for commercial use. That tells me that you can sell it. You can add it in your products. Now, if you're in elementary school, you're going to want to go really heavy with all of this kind of stuff because that's just kind of more of the fashion, especially if you're in lower elementary. If you're in the upper grades, you won't want quite as much stuff, but you still might want a little bit of clip art. Even if it's not like cutesy little kids, you might want to add, you know, like a calculator or different things like that. One thing I like to do is to add clip art and then I turn the opacity down. Opacity? Opacity? I make it less opaque and so that then it's not quite as bold so it's still there it still makes it look prettier but it's not quite as stand out ish as it was before this is just a really quick hack you can do if you're making like especially with worksheets but especially if you're making digital resources make sure that they're pretty that they're appealing that people are going to want to look at them because if they're ugly just no one's going to want them like that's that's the reality this is something that i am not great at full disclosure like i've really worked to get better and i've kind of got a few different styles of how i create things now that i have been doing it for so long but if you look back at my first products like they're ugly and also no one wants to buy them because they're ugly. They really need a facelift, but I just have not gotten that far. So go ahead and put some time into making it aesthetically pleasing. Even if that just means like you pick colors that complement each other, or if you, you know, add a little bit of clip art, that's fine. If you are not like great at designing things, that's okay. You can learn a lot about design on the internet. Like you're already on YouTube. Seriously, just go and look and find some tips for how to make things a little bit prettier. Number three, something I find more and more important with every product, I swear, and that is take pictures of your products. If you have printable products, so for example, like my St. Patrick's Day printable activities, print them out, 
fill them out and take pictures and videos. This is something that does take a little bit of time, you know, when you gotta like cut and paste and you gotta color and do all the things and it seems super silly, but I promise it's gonna make a huge difference. I've been promoting this tip a lot the last two months and I've already had people who have messaged me and said, hey Becca, I've implemented your tip of printing out my resources and taking pictures and it has increased my sales do it do it so just print them out and do them and then keep going the way i do mine is i actually hang out over here at my desk and i have this little phone holder i'll link one down below on amazon it's super cheap and i just point it so that my phone is over my desk and I will time lapse as I am filling out all my products. And that time lapse can then be used in my marketing materials, which we will talk about a little bit later. I will also take a video as a video preview. A lot of times it's just flipping through the pages or kind of like a overlay of what's going on. If my product needs more explanation, then I'll do a little more information. But for the most part, it'll just be like, hey, look, here it is. I will also take pictures of my product. And if you can add some props, so like especially if they're coloring things, you can add like crayons or you could do like a calculator or different things like that. I even use instruments in my music ones. Then it's going to make it even better. So we'll talk about where you're using these photos and stuff later, but go ahead and get them done. If I am doing a digital product, I um, Honestly, full disclosure, don't do it every time, but I try to have my iPad down and I'll do the same thing where I put it down on my table and then I will take pictures above it and I'll put like props around it. So I'll do like instruments and books and stuff around it and take pictures. And I swear it looks so much better in all of my marketing materials. Like it's so nice to be able to see it on the iPad and all that kind of stuff. Now, if you don't have an iPad or you just don't wanna do that, you can superimpose a slide onto a stock photo of an iPad or a computer, and that's totally fine, and that's a good second kind of thing to do, but the best thing would be to actually take a picture like in real life. I do use those pictures sometimes, and I just use ones that I find in Canva and do it that way. You can do that, but you don't have to. I wanted to give you a couple of options. So, do this i know it's time consuming i know it feels like it's not going to make a difference but i promise it will it's time to list your product congratulations now your job gets even harder i used to think listing was the easy part and now i know that it's actually a little bit harder because it's the most important part i repeat your product listing aka your preview and your descriptions is the most important part of your product. So what I want you to think about is SEO. If you don't know what that means, it means search engine optimization. And it basically just means what words are people going to type into the search engine that is teachers by teachers and find your products. This is really important to actually get found in search and that is to include those keywords. So for my St. Patrick's Day resource, I'm going to make sure that I say St. Patrick's Day in there. It's also a Bible resource. So I'm going to say something about the Bible. And so I might want to add something about missionaries because St. Patrick was a missionary and I'm going to include printable and print and go and things like that. And just kind of get an idea for what words people are going to type in to find your product. After that, you're gonna to wanna to use those in your description and in your title. So making sure that your title is something like the story of St. Patrick for Bible class or pizza themed fraction worksheets for fourth grade math or stuff like that that includes words that people are actually searching for because they might be searching for fourth grade math or pizza fraction or something along those lines. And so it's super helpful to make sure you have those words in your title, in your description, all of those things. The next one is your thumbnails. Now, if you're new to TPT, you should know your first thumbnail is called the cover and the other three are called thumbnails. I don't know why that's just a thing, but it is important. Your cover needs to be square. I repeat in 2021, your cover needs to be square. I'm saying that again because I still see people who are doing vertical ones or horizontal ones, and I promise you just do square. I make my covers on Canva. I have a whole tutorial for how I make them. I will leave the link down below, and it is a free service that I use, and I just use the Instagram post size because Instagram posts are squares. So that works great. On your cover, you want the title of your resource. It doesn't have to be the full title, but you want at least the words that people are gonna be looking for. So for example, I had a story of St. Patrick print and go activities. 
pizza fraction worksheets that kind of stuff. You want to have something like that that is easy to read. This is one of the biggest mistakes I see people make in their covers is that their covers are too small. You cannot read them. Remember, when you see a cover, it's going to be like this big. Like it's not a big thing. So you want to make sure your words are big and easy to read. Also, I really highly suggest that you use pictures from your product that we just took in your thumbnails. This is gonna make them look more realistic. It's gonna catch people's eyes. It just looks so much better. It looks so much better. It looks so much better. So do it, trust me. Your other three thumbnails can be pictures of your resource. Again, I'm gonna say use those pictures we took, use those product in action photos. If you wanted to do a flat lay in Canva and like add the picture to a like stock photo, you can do that too, that's fine. But you wanna make sure that people can imagine what the product's going to be like. That's why having like the picture of the iPad makes a difference because people can be like, oh, hey, kids can use it on their iPad. Oh, hey, it's digital. And they'll just get those connections really quickly. Same thing with worksheets and especially coloring sheets. Make sure that you have pictures of them filled out so that people are like, oh, that's what it's gonna look like. The less you leave up to people's imagination, the better. All right, let's talk preview. Preview is something that you should do in addition to thumbnails. Now, sometimes I go to people's <laughs> pages and they have thumbnails and they don't have a preview or they have a preview and they don't have thumbnails. My suggestion, use them all. Different people look at different things and some people just want like an overview, which is what I feel like the thumbnails are, and other people are gonna want that in-depth information, which is what the preview is. There's a couple of different ways to do previews. If you have something like for my St. Patrick's Day resource, I literally just took the PowerPoint I had, I added the word preview over top of everything and saved that as a PDF, and that's my preview. So it literally goes through every single page so people can see exactly what it is. They can't use it because it has preview on it, but they can still see it and they know what it is so they know exactly what they're purchasing. That works really well for things like worksheets or one file PDFs or stuff like that. When I have bigger products that are more in depth, that have more stuff going on, then I will actually go and create a new PowerPoint presentation where I create a new <laughs> preview. What I do is I'll add pictures, either screenshots of the product or the pictures that we took to the PowerPoint. I add like a block and I'll add information at the bottom. You know, this activity teaches these standards. We you do these different activities. It also includes this, it also includes this. And it goes through all those different things that people may not realize on their own just looking at it because it's a little more in depth than just here's some worksheets. This is really, really helpful and really increases the conversion rate, I promise. The other option is video previews. Video previews are so powerful and I highly recommend them. Um, if you have something simple like the worksheets, you can just do like kind of a pan of each of them or flip through it. But if you have something that is a little more confusing, I highly recommend video previews to make it simpler to understand. So if your resource needs some explanation or some setup, definitely talk about that in your video preview. You can actually come on camera and explain it or you can just show it. If you have a craft, this is a great thing to do because you can show like maybe a time lapse of you doing the craft so people have an idea of what to expect, how it's gonna work and all of those different things. Now, I get questions a lot about previews on Google resources. For some reason, as of right now, you can't put video previews on Google resources. I don't really understand why, and I think it's really silly, but that's just my two cents. However, my friend Emily from Joyful Noise Teaching has found a solution. I don't think she came up with it, but she's the one who shared it with me, so I'm giving her the credit. And that is to create a GIF, or a GIF, a G-I-F is so you can do this again in canva i will do a screen recording of my resource i use quicktime by the way i get a lot of questions about that i use quicktime it came free on my mac if you don't have a mac um you can do the google chrome extension screencastify to record your screen and so i just flip through all the things if there's anything that needs to be dragged or anything like that then i'll do that so people can kind of get an idea of it i upload it to canva i like to do it in one of in like a flat lay and then I will download it as a however you call it GIF <laughs> and then you can upload it to TPT because the file size is small enough and it does accept GIFs, GIFs. it just doesn't accept videos I don't know why 
but you can put that in the preview section it won't count as a video preview but it does work as a video if you want to see a more in-depth tutorial emily actually has a video on her youtube channel so i will link that down below as well one last thought on previews and that is this do not do not just upload like the same picture you put as your thumbnail. I've seen this a lot where people will make a thumbnail and they'll have like a bunch of screenshots of their product and then they also upload it as the preview. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. You could do this as a preview, I think would probably work, but if you're going to use it as a preview, don't use it as a thumbnail. Also, personally, I would like a little bit more information. So the only time I've seen this and actually liked it is one of the music teachers that I follow and use his resources because he's awesome um he sometimes does this and he'll have like he'll have a couple pictures of slides in his powerpoint and then he'll have words over it that say what it is so he'll say like it includes the lyric sheets it includes this activity and so you get an idea of what all the different slides are but in general i would say this isn't enough information also if you are a clip art artist you're probably like but i can use it for my clip art don't use the same cover don't use the same picture as the cover if i'm gonna bother to click on the preview button it's because i want to see it bigger so i would really prefer it if you maybe like spread them out onto a couple different pages so that i can see them bigger or even if you don't include all of them it just make them bigger because seriously if someone's gonna bother to click the button <laughs> then you want to give them more than you're giving them on your description page all right number six seven six, seven, I don't know. The next one is your description. We have a whole video about TPT description, so I will leave that link below. We go super in depth into keywords, how to format everything, but here's kind of the gist of it if you want the short version. The short version is you want a paragraph that has lots of keywords and that really catches people's attention. The first three lines are called the snippet and that's what pops up in search. So when someone is searching, the only thing they see is the cover, the title, and the first like three lines. So you really want to make sure in those first three lines that you're capturing people's attention and using those keywords that they are looking for to make sure that they're going to click on your product. So if it's a Google resource, make sure you say that this is a Google resource. Or if it's a game, make sure you say it's a game. Say those things so that people are like, oh, hey, game, that sounds like fun. Or oh, hey, digital resource, that sounds like fun. Or if it's like super simple, no prep activity, put that in there so that people want to click after that have a couple of paragraphs where you describe in excruciating detail what your product is how to use it who it's for and what's included the goal of your description is to convince people that they want to purchase and to make sure that they're not going to be disappointed when they purchase so if you don't give enough information then they're going to be disappointed which is then going to lead to bad reviews but the idea is that you really want to make sure that you are talking in great, great detail. So in mine, I always say like, if it is a Google resource, I'll say it is this many pages. It covers this topic. We have a slide about this. We have a slide about this. We have a slide about this. And I will go, I mean like super detailed, stupid detailed, you know, like, I mean, it's very detailed so that people know exactly what to include, especially with Google resources. Like if it's a printable PDF, you can kind of get away with a little bit less, but y'all with Google resources, people have so many questions. So many questions so many i get questions all day long how do i do this how do i do this does it work with this does it work with this is are the youtube videos embedded or are they links are you doing this are you and i'm like oh my gosh people so the more you can put that in your description the better it's going to be after that i like to do some bullet points where i do things in a shorter version so that people who are just skimming can see like oh, okay it's this many pages it's for this grade it's for that and yes i know that you can tag the grades yes i know you can tag how many pages they are put it in the description anyway Put it in the description anyway do it anyway so that people are just not confused at all after that you can add a couple of different things i like to add related resources and then my instagram handle so people can come follow me there's other things you can add and you can check the video out to see those things hello sorry for the super dramatic change of clothes but i was editing this video and realized that i think i filmed it in two different clips and deleted the other half so we're going to finish up now the good thing is that this was kind of a good place to have like a weird dramatic shift because so far we've been talking about things that you can do to your products on teachers pay teachers and now we're going to talk more about marketing your product off of teachers pay teachers to just really make sure it gets um, as much action as it can now I am going to temper you with the idea that 
especially if you're new you're probably not gonna get a ton of sales right away i find with teachers pay teachers it takes a few weeks or a few months for your resource to really gain traction like it should but the more you can drive to it immediately the better it's going to be in the long run because it's going to kind of give it a boost right off there and get ratings and downloads and just all of those really good things that will help your product out so as far as marketing goes you want to use all the platforms you have now we've been talking about things from tbt which means that even if it's your first product you could do all of those things these are going to be a little more different depending on a little more differentiated to use my teacher words um depending on what you you have available to you so if you are brand new and you haven't started any social media you don't have any long-form content then it's gonna be a little bit harder but I'm gonna go with as much as you possibly can so when it comes to marketing especially if it's a larger product you want to give it as much attention as you can so for me that always means social so I always talk about new products on social I'll post them when I first get them and kind of show like the behind the scenes and sometimes on stories just straight up like filming the back of my computer I will also show like talk about it for the next couple of days on stories on Instagram I like to make a post post on my feed or a reel that has the product so either like pictures of the product or a video of my product so for example when I have a new product on Google Slides I will actually just screen record in the slides app and then I will play through it and that is super helpful in marketing my Google Slides resources because I can post that onto Stories and I can post that onto Pinterest, which we'll talk about in a second, and just all of those good things. I can post it in my feed and Instagram, all of all of the all of the things. Definitely use your social if you have them. If you're on Twitter, use Twitter. If you're on Facebook, use Facebook. And remember not everybody sees all your content and what I mean by that is don't be afraid to post about it a couple of times you need to post about it a couple of times because not everyone first of all not everyone's gonna be on the first day like if you post it on Thursday because yesterday I did I just posted that Misty Copeland resource yesterday and yesterday was Thursday. And so some people saw it yesterday when I shared it, but not everybody was on Instagram yesterday. Some people are only on it on the weekends. Some people are never on it on the weekends. So I, you can share that same thing a couple of different days to kind of get different people on different days. Also, even if they are on Instagram or Twitter or Facebook, because it's the same for all of them, the algorithms rule, which means that not everyone sees all your content. They only show it to percentages of your audience, but it's done all these different things, which we're not gonna get into right now. But the point being, share your resources multiple times. Maybe not back to back to back to back, but maybe you talk about it every two or three posts for the next couple of days, for the next week. Or maybe you talk about it every four or five posts for the next month or two even. Just really make sure that you are sharing that content immediately and then following up with it later. Also, I read somewhere that it takes anywhere between like five and eight touch points with a product for someone to actually purchase it so hypothetically if they saw your product it will probably take them five to eight different times that they see it before they'll purchase so all of that to say it's okay to talk about it many different times i would suggest changing your copy like don't just copy and paste and be like hey new product hey new product hey new product but talk about the benefits talk about why it's important talk about how your kids liked it talk about what's fun about it talk about what standards you're working on talk about books you could use along with it talk about games that could go along with it all of those things are ways that you can market your resource without being quite as go buy my resource even though there is a time and place for that and it's okay especially if it's new so get on social the second thing is if you have an email list definitely send your email list over there your email list is the best place to get your traffic y'all if there is nothing else that you learn from me ever it is to build your dang email list because it is a game changer. You will get so much more traffic from your email list than from anywhere else. It is, I mean, seriously, if you don't believe me, do it, stick with it for a year or two, and then you'll be like, oh my gosh, Becca was right. And I'll be like, I told you so. Except probably not, because you probably won't actually tell me that, but you know, I'll be thinking it. Anyway, again, so go ahead and send it to that email list so that you are helping people to get over there. You could always do like a sale on the first day or two, especially if you have a bigger email list. Um, if you don't have a lot of people who are on your email list or on your social, I wouldn't bother with a sale because 
if you're doing sales by yourself, you have to have a big enough audience to actually like drive people over there. But if you do have a bigger audience, that's a great way to get people to purchase like immediately is to have it a little bit cheaper on the first day or the first day or two so that people are like, oh, hey, I need to buy it right now. So definitely send it to your email list. The next one is Pinterest. So if you haven't been using Pinterest, I do have a video all about Pinterest. I also have a whole playlist about email, so I will link those down below. And Pinterest is a really good place to put your resource. Now, full disclosure, Pinterest does take a while, just like TPT does. It kind of, it's more of a slow process, but I would go ahead and start pinning immediately so that even a few months from now, it will get out and be a lot better. So definitely post on Pinterest. I would love it. Not I would love it. You will love it if you use videos on Pinterest. That's definitely what Pinterest is favoring right now. And if you have access to story pins, it's still a new feature, so not everybody has it, but it is a game changer and I would highly recommend it. And as soon as it is released to everybody, we will have like a whole full video about story pins because I am in love. I'm in love with the story pin. Also, if you have any longer form content like a YouTube channel or an email list, go there too. Those are great places to help drive traffic to your resources. This is the best thing you can do truly to drive traffic, especially in the long term, because a YouTube video can live for years and a blog post can live for years and people can find them and go and purchase your resource years from now because you took the two hours to make the thing back then. Especially with a blog, this might not be again an immediate thing, but it will make a huge difference in just having another way to send people over to your resource so highly recommend that especially if your resource takes a little bit more explaining that is a really 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 good way to get more people to purchase I have found that resources that take more explaining usually are bigger resources that are higher ticket items I do so much better if I make a blog post or a video or both about them because I do have both don't like go and create a blog and a YouTube video just for this. But it is so much better because people can see the resource, they can understand it and all of those good things as opposed to being like, hmm, I don't really know what this resource is and so I'm not sure if I wanna buy it, I'm not sure it's for me. Because if people are unsure, they're probably not gonna purchase from you. So if you have this longer form content, that is a great, great, great place to drive more traffic back to your TBT shop. Not just immediately, but like long term. If you're interested in starting a blog or a YouTube channel, I will leave a link to, I have like a getting started free email course that you can sign up for, one for each of those. So click the links down below and I'll walk you through like day one, do this, day two, do this. It's very easy, very clear, and will help you immensely. Just one last thought, and that is don't forget to hype your resource. If you're watching this after you created a resource, I would highly recommend that next time you create a resource, you start hyping it early. So if you can show some behind the scenes on Instagram stories, or if you can hop on Twitter and make a poll, I'm really not good at Twitter, so I don't really know what they have, but you can ask people their opinions. You know, do you like this background or this background? Do you want me to include this? Do you want to include that? Anytime I have a question, I go to my Instagram stories because I put that poll feature there. People can vote and then I'm like, heck yes, I don't have to think about it. I can just go with whatever you say. And then I know you're more inclined to buy it because you voted for that, which is also really awesome because people might feel a little bit more involved. They also know it's coming, so they're looking forward to it. For example, I recently posted a virtual field trip to Ireland and I posted many, many, many times to my stories beforehand because I had so many questions about how I should do this, what song should I include, you know, all these different things. And so I had people messaging me like, is this available yet? Can I, can I get this? And I was like, no, it's not available yet. And they're like, let me know what it is. I'm like, okay, cool. And so that's a really good way to get people involved. You could even do this with your email list and say like, hey, you know, this is coming. Or if you are a more of a vlogger style video person on YouTube, those are some words, then you can show it in a vlog and say like, hey, I'm working on this. Leave a comment down below with what your ideas are. I wouldn't do that if you do more of the like sit down style videos where you chit chat. But if you're doing a vlog, it's a little more casual. You have that leeway. So those are all really great ways that you can create some hype. I have a whole video Video about creating hype so if you are interested in creating hype to get your resources like launched well that's really what the hype video is about then you can check out that link down below this video is more like let's give your 
resource the very best chance that it possibly can have long term. That one's more like let's launch it pretty well. All right, friends. So basically when it comes to marketing, use all your marketing tactics, use all of your different platforms. If you don't have any platforms, I would really suggest that you start with something so that you do have something to build and so that you will have someone to talk to. I would definitely recommend an email list and a social media if you are going to get started with something. Email list, I feel like is a little less maintenance. Social is a little more like you got to kind of figure it out, but both of them are really good in their own right. I love, love, love long form content and I hope truly believe it is the game changer in your business but it also is very time consuming so that's the only reason that I'm not suggesting you start with that I'm suggesting you start with email and or a social a like one that kind of appeals to you because blogging and youtubing just takes a lot of time and so if you're new then I wouldn't suggest that if you've already got your store pretty down pat and you've got your email list and your social work in that's when I would add the blog or the YouTube channel because it's just you can only take so many new things at one time I would love if you left a comment down below and let me know which tip you like the best and or any suggestions you have for how you would get your resources out into the world on their best foot so that we don't have to go back and change things later. I was just thinking in the car on the way home about how I have like all these thumbnails that I really need to change because they're ugly. But that sounds like a lot of work. So maybe over the summer. After you leave your comment, definitely make sure you hit the like and the subscribe button. Like helps other people like you to find this video and subscribe makes sure that you see the next video, especially if you hit that notification bell so you'll get notified when the next video comes out twice a week. So thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.